Hi, Calculus. Um, I had a question to solve uh, 4.6, number 35. So I'm going to go over this homework question. This, this might take two videos. Uh, sketching is very time consuming, especially if it's trig. All right, so, um, so you start by needing to find, so to sketch it, you're going to need the first and the second derivative. You're going to need the graph. Uh, you're going to need the data on the first derivative and the data on the second derivative and then on and on and then we'll draw it. Okay, so let me let me just break. There's so much stuff that let me just get going with it. Alright, so I'm taking the derivative of this because I'm... Um, did I write the question right? Oh, oops, hold on a second. There's a 4 there. And it's on 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Um, cosine. Okay, so there's the derivative, and now I'm going to solve for the critical numbers, so I'm going to set this equal to zero. I'm moving the um, two to the other side. I'm dividing by negative four. Alright, so um, the critical number is going to occur where the cosine of x equals a half. The cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Okay, this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which means this side is radical 3. Okay, um, it really just depends who you had for pre-calc. I make my students memorize these. These are standard triangles, and there's two standard triangles and one unit circle. Uh, and I make them memorize that, and then they, they're fine for all of calculus, calc 2, calc 3. I mean, it's otherwise it's just you're always going back to try to figure out what's going on. So it's just, it's just really easy. It's just to memorize the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the 45, 45, 90, and the unit circle. All right, so that's what I'm doing. It just really depends how you learned it. Um, if if you add me for pre-calc, you're good to go because I I made you <laughs> I made you memorize these because I know they keep coming up all the time. All right. Um, so if you're across from radical three, that's 60 degrees. So that's pi over three. So these are the reference angles. In quadrant one, the reference angle and the standard angle are equivalent. So that means that in quadrant 1, that is your first answer, pi over 3. Now, you have to, this is a reference angle here, you have to rotate into quadrant 4. I'm not sure what I just said, but you have to get yourself into quadrant 4, and you have to calculate this angle. It's not in standard position. So you're going to do 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is going to be 5 pi over 3. So those are the two critical numbers. If you're sort of uncomfortable with radians, the unit measure of radians, uh, this guy is equivalent to 60 and this guy is equivalent to 300. If it's just easier for you to do it in degrees, it's it's fine if, if that's the way you want to go. Alright, so, <clears throat> so now let's just write all that stuff back over here. So we've got the first derivative is um, Is that and we've got that the critical number for this first derivative is pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 and when we study the behavior of the first derivative we are locked right because the original problem said we're, we're not on the whole number line right we're between 0 and 2 pi here so, so we, we want to stay locked in between 0 and 2 pi So, like I said, I might have to do a couple of videos for this. These are very time consuming. <clears throat> uh, so 60 degrees, so a good test value would be like, um, since this is 60 here, a good test value would be like 45 degrees or pi over 4. A good test value in between here would be like pi over 2 or pi, right, that's 90 degrees if you prefer. 
that unit. And over here, you're really in close, so I would go with like, um, you could do, uh, let's see, you could do a, a 30 or 45 reference angle. So if you're a 30 reference angle, you're at 330. So that's 2 pi minus pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6 if you're in radians. Okay, so those are some suggestions for test values just because we can calculate those. Now you have to figure out whether the derivative is positive or negative for these values. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm, I'm going to actually do the work on this because I think a lot of people, the, the trig is a little more difficult for them. So I'm plugging in my test value that I chose, which was pi over 4. You could have chosen pi over 3, sorry, pi over, two, uh, pi over 6 for this. I just happened to choose, choose this one. Cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. This reduces. Okay, so we can see that this value is going to end up being negative. All right, now I'm going to uh, plug in uh, pi, over, pi over 2 I picked, okay. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this just comes out as a 2. It doesn't really matter what the number is. You're going for positives and negatives, so this is positive. Graph is going up. All right, um, I picked 11 pi over 6. Um, let me just, let me just reference what that would be. 11 pi, that's 30 degrees off of here. So that's going to be 1, 2, radical 3. So the cosine of that is going to be negative radical 3 adjacent over hypotenuse over 2, 30 degrees, okay. So this is going to end up being 2 plus 2 radical 3. Um, cosine's positive, I'm sorry, this is positive here, so this is negative here. Yeah, cosine's positive in quadrant 4. Okay, so it's actually going to be negative, so which means that this is actually going to be negative. Okay, this guy comes down. All right, so um, so this is the behavior of where the graph goes down, where the graph goes up, where the graph goes down, which is going to be useful when we uh, draw, when we sketch this. So the other thing, try to remember when you're sketching is when you're working on the first derivative, you're also looking for extrema, so minimums and maximums. So now I'm going to do the first derivative test, first derivative test, and I see that it goes down and up around this critical number, which means that right here is a minimum. And first derivative test over here, I see that this goes up and then down around this critical number, which means that this guy's a max. So I actually need to calculate what these values are. So this is pi over 3. This guy over here is 5 pi over 3. All right, so now um, this, this is where it gets a little tricky, right, because you're trying to sketch these points on the graph. So the ma max and the min, make sure that you, you plug them into the original and not into the derivative, okay, not into the derivative. So I'm now going to plug... Right, it's a lot of data collecting when you do this. I'm now looking, I'm now, I've just done the first derivative test and I, now I'm looking for the relative extrema. So um, I'm looking for the pi over three and what coordinate that is. And the other one we said was uh, five pi over three and what coordinate that is. Wow, I'm almost at 10 minutes now and I haven't, okay, yeah, this is gonna definitely be two videos. Okay, so these, we're looking for x, y values that would go on the graph. So I'm gonna plug, when I plug in these values, I have to plug it into the original. So let me just move the original over here so I have it f of x equals 2x minus four sine x. Okay, that's the original guy. All right, 
so here I go. So f of pi over 3 is pi over 3 minus 4 sine pi over 3. All right, so 2 pi over 3, uh, pi over 3, 60 degrees. That's the little bigger leg. Okay, so minus 4. So sine's going to be... Um, Radical 3 over 2, that's positive because it's in quadrant 1. Okay, but I got the negative in the formula. Alright, so this is going to be 2 pi over 3 minus 2 radical 3. Alright, let's get out our calculator now because you're going to need to graph that. You're going to need to know that position in space. So, um, I think I was trying to... Let's see here. I don't know how to clear this. Okay here maybe okay who knows um okay so all right let's hope this doesn't die all right one second here technical difficulties You know what? I'll just pick it up in the next video. I'll plug that into my calculator. Um, all right. I'll catch you soon. Bye.